This assembly room for building lead oxide camera tubes for color television employs the most up-to-date laminar flow air conditioning system. Ministry of Transport landing ship Sir Tristram, inbound from east of Suez. On the bridge, radar is something you look at and rely on. To an engineer, it is an instrument which radiates and receives pulses of microwave power. Its heart, the workhorse of so many radar sets, is the magnetron. To the makers, a magnetron is a challenge of physical engineering. However well established the theory of magnetrons may be, it's the precision that goes into the making that decides their accuracy and stability. The very pure copper used for the anode sometimes has to be fashioned to the limits of its workability. Once made, the components will come together with a certain grace. If you're careful. And if you're patient. Physical dimension is all important. The various materials that make up a magnetron must be cunningly designed so as to retain these dimensions in the furnace and in the heat of performance. EEV, as well as turning out the greatest number of magnetrons in Britain, also provide the greatest range of types for small radar sets, for microwave cookers, for industrial dielectric heating, or like this one, for air traffic control at London Airport. At the moment, 10.20, it's pulsing away at Trident Flight BE341, inbound from Paris, so that air traffic control can keep an eye on it. This controller is lucky. He needn't strain his eyes in the gloom or peer through a mask. His display is fitted with an EEV direct view storage tube. Storage tubes are made on the same general principles as cathode ray tubes. But the special electron gun produces a picture a hundred times brighter than the conventional CRT and a mesh behind the phosphor gives them a widely variable persistence. Ten thirty. Trident flight BE-104 climbs out to the south of France. Eleven twenty-five. One eleven flight EG-816 leaves for Stuttgart. 11.30, BC-10, flight BA-561, leaves for Montreal and Chicago. Between them, these three aircraft carry one storage tube, three magnetrons, six klystrons, six TRTB cells, 
three thyrotrons, three tetrodes, and three vacuum capacitors, all made by EEV, with precision, of course. Though the very fine grid used in the small klystrons doesn't have a very promising start. 199 copper-plated aluminium wires are squashed together by sheer brute force. and sliced into discs 18 thousandths of an inch thick. Then, the delicate touch. The discs are ground to a smooth ten thou. When the aluminium is dissolved out, You have a honeycomb copper grid as robust as you could wish, but so finely etched that you need a microscope to inspect it. Where do you think this one's bound? The Bahamas? Or the side of the road at Welling Garden City? noon, and the hundredth car body of the day is welded at Vauxhall. Just two of thousands of EEV ignatrons doing this sort of job throughout industry. 12.03, the 59th message passes through an unmanned relay station in Quebec. It's a dull and lonely life for traveling wave tubes on this sort of assignment. Left here for months unattended, no one to talk to, except the next station on the horizon. They must long for their early days at Chelmsford, when everyone paid them so much attention. The care with which a helix was wound, and tested for pitch to a few hundredths of a sow. A painstaking assembly. The concentration on each tube is an individual. And the warm comfort of the proving bay where they sat for a whole week. Forgotten. Not even the telly to watch. It's half past one, and now here are some details of the programs we have for you this afternoon. The artistic the talent which goes into television is sometimes obvious, sometimes debatable. The hidden talent which produces his high quality picture, the viewer quite rightly takes for granted but others don't. EEV produce many devices used in television broadcasting all over the world. Cathode ray tubes for camera viewfinders, studio monitors, and projection displays. Small valves for studio equipment. Large valves. And large klystrons that radiate the final picture. Rectifiers. And spark gaps for the transmitters. But perhaps the most critical component and the most delicately fashioned is the camera tube. This is a four and a half inch image orthicon. For their work in its development, EEV were awarded an Emmy by the American National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Into this one component go so many of the skills and precision techniques that are used in all the other EEV products. Just a few examples. The front face. The smallest imperfection, the tiniest speck of dirt in the image forming parts of the tube will show on the final picture. This is the time to weed them out before a lot more expensive work is wasted.
It takes patience. The special Elcon target, which gives this EEV tube its preeminence, is in two parts. The target mesh is plated onto a ruled glass sheet. Don't expect to see the engraved lines. There are 750 to the inch. And after plating, it doesn't look like a mesh at all. To see its structure, it has to be magnified. Then a perfect piece is found of the right size for the target. That takes patience too. More patience for the drawing of the target glass. This is done in monochromatic light because the glass is so thin that the operator has to gauge its thickness by interference. The image orthicon is not a tube you can mass produce. In the electron gun, the first dynode has a hole in the center. This hole is one and a half thousandths of an inch in diameter. Can you see it? Neither can we. But through that hole passes the scanning beam on which the entire operation of the tube depends. The rest of the electron gun is assembled with the same patient care from precision-made parts. Then each gun is x-rayed to check its assembly before going any further. Absolutely dust-free conditions are essential in this work. This assembly room for building lead oxide camera tubes for color television employs the most up-to-date laminar flow air conditioning system. In the end, it's the picture that counts. This is where the smallest speck of dust, the tiniest defect, will be spotted and the tube rejected. If the tube passes its tests, it'll spend its life looking into the faces of the famous and the infamous. Two hundred and thirty eight stations use EEV long life image orthicon. Six minutes past two, and Sir Tristram comes into her berth. From the bridge, two hundred and fifty feet from the bow, you can't see the edge of the jetty or very much of anything. But a television camera can see it all. This is just one example of closed circuit industrial television using the image orthicon sister tube, the EEV Vidicon. Half past two, and at Hillingdon Hospital, a patient is prepared for a continuous x ray examination. Usually, this is done in a gloomy fluoroscopic room where the doctor may have to spend half an hour adjusting his eyes to a very dim picture. This is different, and the difference is in here. The image isocon is a camera tube that can see in what even a cat would call the dark. We'll show you.
This camera has been fitted with an isocon tube, and the scene is illuminated with this light. It's about as bright as a flashlight with a flat battery. Now, with the main lights out, our film records nothing, the eye sees nothing. But the isocon sees it all. The security uses of this are obvious. The military uses must be left to the imagination. In medicine, the very low X-ray dosage a patient is allowed for a protracted examination produces a picture so faint that viewing it is normally a strain on both doctor and patient. But it's no strain to the isocon. Tests in Holland have shown that using an image isocon, a good picture can be obtained with a dosage as low as four micro -runchons. Three o'clock, at the Atomic Energy Research Establishment at Harwell, a linear accelerator is pulsed by seven large klystrons. At the Marconi Company, an EEV gas laser is the basic tool in experiments in the intriguing field of holograms. When illuminated by a laser beam, this shapeless set of interference patterns produces a three-dimensional picture. How do you know it's three-dimensional? Well, look, you can see round corners. 4.45, and the day shift finishes at the four factories at Lincoln, Benfleet, Maldon, and Chelmsford forming between them the largest producers of specialized electronic valves outside the United States. Their products never go off duty. Night services rely on EEV small valves for communication. Color them from BBC Two is transmitted, like so many other UHF services throughout the world, by a large EEV Kleistron. This one is at Crystal Palace. And Mr. J.C.D. Marsh of Hatfield College of Technology, using the Isocon and only a three-inch lens, manages to photograph clearer shots of the moon and in the 25th of a second, more stars than he would normally expect on a 10-minute exposure. Tomorrow is another day. To the English Electric Valve Company, it's another day to turn out about a third of the specialized valve produced in Britain. Another day to make almost half of the specialized valve directly exported from Britain. Another day of precision.